then the personality of that pious person rubs off onto the child as well. This is called tahniq. This is also sunnah. People come up with all sorts of funny names. I don't know where they dig them out of. Uh, when they grow up and then mashallah they become what they become, you know, you wonder. Uh, when they are seven days old, uh, mashallah, then trim their hair, uh, shave their hair, give sadqa on their behalf, make aqiqa. And little children sleep together, but Islamically by the time they are 10, by 10 they should be separate in the sleeping. And when they are older, more sensible, start teaching them how to pray, and by the time they are 7, they should be in the habit of praying. Uh, so the first thing, look for a good wife. And then when Allah, mashaAllah, when you have relationship as well, there are adhkars, there are sunnats when you go. Many people when they get married, subhanAllah, they... Well, they almost behave like animals. Uh, but when a person goes to his wife, there are du'as to be recited, seeking Allah's refuge. Uh, the first time you meet your wife, Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayriya wa khayri ma jabaltaha alayhi wa a'udhu bika min sharriya wa sharri ma jabaltaha alayhi. Ya Allah, I seek your goodness and all the goodness that you place this woman upon. And I seek your refuge, Ya Allah, from her evil and whatever evil is in her, Ya Allah. And then when you go towards her and you meet her, then Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytana wa jannibi shaytana ma razaqtana. Ya Allah, when you go to your wife, in the name of Allah, you seek, you begin with Allah's name, everything. You're eating, you're going home, even at such a delicate and a sensitive moment, you remember Allah with Allah's will, Allah's permission. Because Allah has made this lawful for you. And then you go, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaitan. Ya Allah, keep shaitan away from us. Wa jannibi shaitan ma razaqtana. Ya Allah, whatever you give us in this meeting we are going to have. Ya Allah, don't let there be any share for shaitan in this. And then when a person has satisfied himself, and at that moment, Allahumma la taj'al lishshaytani fi ma razaqtani naseeba. As though you're planting that seed, uh, but Ya Allah, don't let there be any share for shaytan in what you give us, Ya Allah. In our meeting, make it fruitful, Ya Allah, and don't let there be any share for shaytan. Otherwise, shaytan also puts his share in there as well. Uh, and then there is influence of shaitan in the child which develops. Uh, and when the child is born as well. MashaAllah, the mother of Maryam alayhi salam, when she was expecting, uh, she made a dua to Allah. Ya Allah, inni nadhartu laka ma fi batni muharraran fataqabbal minni. Ya Allah, whatever is in my stomach, Ya Allah, I make a vow to give it for your name. And falamma wada'atha qalat rabbi inni wada'atuha untha. She was hoping it will be a boy she can give in the service of the house of Allah. Uh, to serve Allah's deen and so on. But when it turned out to be a girl, Ya Allah, it's a girl. They didn't used to have ultrasound in those days. <laughs> whereby they can determine what it is beforehand. Whether it's a girl or a boy. Until the last moment she was hopeful it will be a boy. So that she can give it and it will be more useful in the service of Allah. But when it turned out to be a girl, uh, she wasn't disappointed. Uh, she was happy with whatever Allah gave her. Uh, but, Rabbini wada'atuha untha. Allah said, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. I know what I've given you. I know what is born. Allah, Allah as though Allah was saying, I, I know I gave you the girl. Walaysa dhakaru kal untha. Indeed, you think a boy... Uh, a girl and the boy aren't the same. And then she said, وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا Maryam. Ya Allah, I want to name her Maryam. وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Ya Allah, whatever it is, it's a girl, Ya Allah. But nevertheless, I still give her and her offspring in your refuge from shaitan. Let there be no influence of shaitan upon my daughter and her offspring. And Allah wanted to make Maryam such a special woman. And then Allah wanted to bless her with a special son. Uh, to make him a sign of his qudrat for the whole of humanity. Uh, referring to Isa alayhi salatu was salam. When Maryam grew up. And uh, that's when Allah wanted to bless her with a son. So all the dua of Maryam's mother as soon as she gave her birth. Uh, so... Du'as before 
Mashallah, du'as throughout, du'as at the time of birth as well. Uh, you want to start praying for your children. Uh, mashallah, right from the beginning. And then mashallah, when they are born as well, du'as of parents are very, very important for children. Especially du'a of a father, mother, Allahu Akbar. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are like a blanket like a covering like mashallah security for them throughout their lives and those parents who pray for the children and those children who serve their parents well and earn their duas uh, one is you know parents are fed up with, with children and they make dua ya allah guide them ya allah mir bani farma and parents are worried for them and they uh, they don't listen but out of desperation they pray uh, you that is also good, mashallah. But one is when children, they are obedient and they serve their parents well. And parents out of happiness, uh, from the bottom of their hearts, mashallah, they make duas for their, pa- their children, mashallah. Uh, such duas are so powerful and so wonderful uh, in, in, uh, with regards to children. They, they bring them blessings throughout their lives. So Maryam salam's mother, as soon as she was born, mashallah, uh, she gave, uh, she started praying for, Ya Allah, I gave her in your refuge. And her dua was accepted so well by Allah. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah gave us so much good acceptance. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in one hadith, he said, every child which is born, shaitan touches them, uh, except uh, Maryam and her son. Because of the dua of Maryam salam's mother, she wasn't even a Nabi. Uh, but because of her dua, Allah protected her, her daughter Maryam, wa ibnaha Rasulullah said, and her son, that shaitan didn't mess with him. Uh, shaitan, he didn't mess with him. Uh, Allah gave them such refuge, such protection. And when a child is born, one of the first things you do, mashallah, is give adhan. Adhan, you know what is Adhan? Allahumma rabba hadihi ad-da'wati tam This is the perfect da'wah. When Adhan is called, and then shaitan flees. So when you give Adhan, mashallah, in the eyes of a newborn, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave Adhan uh, in the ears of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu anhu, in another narration he said, when Hazrat Hussain radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, when Hazrat Hussain was born, he gave Adhan in one year and the Iqama as well. Uh, so you're giving da'wah, you're teaching, or you are planting the seed of the purpose of life for, uh, for this newborn coming into this world, right at the very moment he comes here. You are making him aware. You have to recognize Allah. You have to recognize Allah's greatness. You have to worship Allah, acknowledge His existence, and acknowledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. You come into this world, you come here to serve Allah and to worship Him. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. And this will lead you to success. This will bring you goodness throughout your life here and in the life hereafter. Falah in Arabic is a very comprehensive word implying success of this world and the life hereafter. Uh, not just this world, not just Akhirah. Falah is goodness of this world and the life hereafter. So you're teaching this boy, this girl, newborn, planting this seed. Like when you plant a seed, what happens? It's not fruitful straight away. You will plant the seed, look after it, water it, fertilize it and so on. Many years later, mashallah, it become a tree and become fruitful. And that, right now, planting the seed of Tawheed, the Risalat, is the maqsad of his life. Soon as they are born, uh, when they are seven days old, uh, mashallah, then trim their hair, uh, shave their hair, give sadqa on their behalf, make aqiqa. Uh, even the mushriks of Makkah, the Quraysh and others, and throughout the world, when a child is born into any household, you know, they're happy, they celebrate birth of children. It's, it's a natural thing, people are happy when Allah blesses them with, mashallah, with children and so on. So the people used to celebrate by, by making a sacrifice. Uh, from Ibrahim salam's time, mashallah, the Jews as well, they used to make sacrifices. And uh, the Quraysh, because they were also descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and they would make aqiqah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, among the few things from Jahiliya which Rasulullah kept up, aqiqah is one. Aqiqah is one of them. Another was diyat. 
Hadiyat is when a person kills someone wrongly. Uh, then in the time of Jahiliya, people used to offer hundred camels to the family of a person who was killed wrongly as compensation uh, for a mistake uh, that they wrongly killed a man. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam upheld that. And he kept it up. And in the Quran, it is also mentioned. Aqiqa was similarly was a custom amongst the Arabs, uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept it up because this is one of the things from Ibrahim alayhi salam Sunnah uh, that he, when people go to Hajj at Hajj as well, uh, they make sacrifice and they shave their hair uh, in that order. So on the seventh day, preferable that a person he makes aqiqa. Aqiqa on behalf of the child, preferable for him uh, on behalf of a boy, two lambs or two goats, and on behalf of a girl, one lamb or one goat. Uh, if a person can't afford two for a boy, he can even make one. And if he can't afford anything, it's not wajib or faraz, it's a way of thanking Allah. And because of this sacrifice, Allah keeps the children in His protection and removes the evil influence of shaitan and any other burden which may be accompanying the child. And so aqiqa is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a recommended practice, uh, not a wajib or a farad, but something which is preferable. And another preferable amal when a child is born is as soon as a child is born and reasonably practical uh, that Sahaba, just as they would bring their children to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would chew a date or something, and then, sp- then put it in the mouth of the child. You don't feed it because a child at that time can't, can't eat dates and things, but you just uh, rub it in the, in the mouth cavity of the child or on the teeth or the gums, uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray for their goodness for their for their guidance for barakah for the children and so on this is called tahniq and if a person knows someone pious it doesn't have to be an imam or sheikh if there is a pious member of your own family mashallah someone elder or, or there is someone pious then the personality of that pious person rubs off onto the child as well this is called tahniq this is also sunnah and to give the child then a good name uh, to shave his hair as well, uh, and then uh, just as Hazrat Hassan radiallahu anhu and Hazrat Hussein radiallahu anhu, when they were born, then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them, Hazrat Fatima, to shave their hair, the hair the children are born with, and give their weight in sadaqa, uh, in uh, in silver, in in sadaqa, which was at the time one dirham which is a few pens. So whatever is a gesture of goodness, mashallah, thanksgiving to Allah, whatever you can afford in terms of sadaqah uh, on behalf of the child, as well as aqiqah, mashallah, then this keeps the child in the protection of Allah. And to give him a good name. This is the first gift that a, fa- a parent gives to their children a good name. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, حَقُّ الْوَلَدِ عَلَى الْوَالِدِ أَنْ يُحْسَنَ إِسْمَهُ وَيُحْسَنَ أَدَبًا This is the right of children upon their parents that they should give them a good name and a good upbringing. Teach them good manners. The first good present you can give your child, uh, many, as children grow up, people buy them presents and things, mashallah. But the first good thing that a child deserves from you is a good name. And the Prophet said, "Ahabul Asma'i ilallahi Abdullah wa Abdul Rahman." The names Allah loves the most: Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. Nowadays, it's strange. It's become such a trend. People go for unusual names, exclu- exclusive names, which other people don't have. Strange names. Uh, strange, many a name people dig out, I don't know where they've dug them out of. <laughs> Subhanallah, what a better name than what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has suggested. Rasulullah, Allah loves these names. Amongst the Sahaba, there were so many Abdullahs. Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin Zubair, Abdullah bin Masood, Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Jabir, MashaAllah, Abdullah, Abdullah, Abdullah. Abdul Rahman as well. Yeah, it's a nice name, but you know, something else, you know. <laughs> Rasulullah's name. Uh, Allah gives, Allah says in the Quran, Allah, Allah, Allah gave names to some prophets. 
Allah said about to Zakaria alayhi salam, Ya Zakaria, inna nubashiruka bi ghulami nismuhu yahya lam naj'an lahu min qablu samiyya. O Zakaria, I'm going to give you a son and he is to be named Yahya. No one before him was named Yahya. So what an exclusive name Allah gave for Yahya alayhi salam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born and named Muhammad, People said, wow, Abdul Muttalib, what a strange, we've never heard of this name, what a wonderful name. A name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahmad, uh, Ahmad was Rasulullah's name in the previous scriptures and in the heavens. People come up with all sorts of funny names. I don't know where they dig them out of. Uh, when they grow up and then mashallah they become what they become, you know, you wonder. <laughs> they wanted them to be something extraordinary. <laughs> well, you asked for it. <laughs> Uh, mashallah, the names also have uh, have an influence in the personality of children. Mashallah, many, uh, many, 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 mashallah, children who are, whose names are Omars, mashallah, they're up with it. <laughs> many Usmans, Hazrat Usman radiallahu anhu was gentle, soft hearted, mashallah. You find many Usmans, they are very soft, mashallah, they're kind hearted, uh, mashallah, and others. As Ali radiallahu anhu, mashallah, he was a brave man. And so the names also have an influence. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr was good in everything. Uh, he was always first all the time, uh, first in everything. He will, in this ummah, uh, the first man to enter Jannah. And the man so good, Rasulullah said, when Abu Bakr will come to Jannah, Jannah will, will open all its gates. Yes, Abu Bakr, wherever you want, however you want. Uh, MashaAllah. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was a name as uh, Ali radiallahu anhu. Uh, he named one of his sons Abu Bakr. Allah blessed him with 14 sons. He gave his sons many different names. Uh, three of them he named Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad Akbar, Muhammad Awsat, Muhammad Asghar. Uh, and then one he named Abdullah, one Ubaidullah. One Jafar, one Yahya, one Aun, one Abbas. Uh, and then left three, he named one Abu Bakr, one Umar, one Usman. <laughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Hassan radiallahu anhu, Allah blessed him with sons. One he made sure, he gave one Abu Bakr, one Umar. Hazrat Hussein similarly, Allah gave him sons, one Abu Bakr, one Umar. Uh, mashallah. So these are the names Sahaba used to keep. They had respect for Abu Bakr, respect for Umar. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Nowadays people want fancy names. Allahu Akbar. So, حَقُّ الْوَلَدِ عَلَى الْوَالِدِ أَنْ يُحْسِنَ إِسْمَهُ وَيُحْسِنَ adaba. Give them a good name, then teach them good manners. Teach them, mashallah, how to address elders. Teach them how to pray. When they are, mashallah, when they begin talking, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when they begin talking, then teach them to say, La ilaha illa Allah. Uh, first, Allah, Allah. When they can say a phrase, La ilaha illa Allah. مَنْ كَانَ أَوَّلُ كَلَامِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَآخِرُ كَلَامِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ He who begins his life with La ilaha illa Allah and ends with his life with La ilaha illa Allah then whatever is in between Allah will overlook and this man will go straight to Jannah. Uh, but nowadays people begin with uh, the education, upbringing of their children A for apple B for banana, C for cat, and D for dog. <laughs> so when they keep to that, kutte bille se honi hai, to fir aage kya hona hai? So when they begin with a cat and a dog, obviously they're gonna be barking all their lives. Uh, so then they wonder why they don't give you respect. Uh, so teach them to say Allah, Allah, La ilaha illa Allah. And when they are older, muru aulada kum bis salati wa hum abna usabain. And when they are older, more sensible, start teaching them how to pray. And by the time they are seven, they should be in the habit of praying. Allah. And then tell them to teach, teach them and tell them, safeguard their prayers. وَضْرِبُوهُمْ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ عَشْرٍ By the time they are ten, if they are not praying, then take suitable measures. You know what that is? Uh, take suitable measures to make sure وَفَرِّقُوهُمْ فِي الْمَضَاجِ And separate their beddings. Many a times parents, for whatever reasons, you know, they put little children together to sleep. Sometimes children are scared. Sometimes they don't have extra bedrooms or whatever. And little children sleep together. But Islamically, by the time they are ten, by ten they should be separate in the sleeping. 
Uh, they should not share their beds or at least they should not share their blankets. And uh, sleep in such a way that they sleep separate. وَفَرِّقُوهُمْ فِي الْمَضَاجِ So that they don't develop wrong attractions. Uh, so that they don't develop wrong desires. Undesirable Allahu Akbar happenings. Subhanallah. And then when you pay, when your children, when they grow up, mashallah, and they mature, they've reached the age now, they've become mature, then marry them off. And when you marry them off, look for somebody suitable partner. Mashallah. And in finding a suitable partner for your children, and look for piety again. Many people they come and ask me, Molana. You know, we've got children, daughters especially, looking for someone professional, you know, for them. <laughs> you come to the wrong guy, you're looking for a mashallah, deendar, somebody, they say somebody smart. Well, I said most people I know, mashallah, you know. <laughs> smart, people think they're looking smart, clean, mashallah, nothing here, nothing there, everywhere, like a peeled potato. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> that's their, that's their, <laughs> that's their idea of someone smart. There was no one smarter than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahsanu minka lam tara qattu aynan, wa ajmalu minka lam talidin nisa'u. Khuliqta mubarra'an min kulli aybin, ka'annaka qad khuliqta kama tasha'u. I know I ever saw anyone smarter than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how could any I see anyone more handsome than Rasulullah when no woman ever gave birth to anyone better than Rasulullah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recently, one of my friends, he took his son for an interview. Mashallah. And the brother, he's got mashallah, proper daddy. So when they reach there, his son is clean shaved, smart, mashallah, a bit like a peeled potato as well. Uh, but <laughs> when they went there, and the other, f the girl's family saw the man, they were scared. <laughs> Who is this guy? He said, don't worry, I haven't come for myself, I brought my son along for him. <laughs> but because of the father having a beard, they refused the boy as well. Oh, he said, man, I'm come for my son, he's educated, professional, mashallah, smart, suited, booted. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that you got such a big beard. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Uh, this, this is the attitude people have now, subhanallah. Uh, so when you start looking for... For uh, suitable partners for your children, for a son, for a girl, mashallah, look for someone pious. And then mashallah, wed them, you've done the best that you can. So this, these are the rights of the children upon the parents. They should give them a good upbringing, they should make du'as for them, and they should carry on making du'as for them. Even when they are mature, they've got children of their own, they are still your children. Uh, even if they become daddies and granddads themselves, <laughs> uh, they are still your children. Alhamdulillah, I've become a granddad, uh, but when I go to see my mother, when I go to see my dad, mashallah, you know, for them, I'm still their son. So even similarly, your children, even though they be, might become daddies and mashallah, granddads in time, many times, mashallah, you know, people have long lives and they're in their lives, their children become grandparents, mashallah. But for parents, no matter what you become, you still be, you still be their baby. And you still be their child or their son or their daughter. So carry on praying for them as well throughout their lives. They need your du'as. And mashallah, your du'as are their security throughout their lives. And then, but don't forget. Don't forget. Now you might become a husband, you might become a father, you might become a daddy. But you also have your parents to look up to. Just as they looked after you, they brought you up, mashallah, they gave you the name, they gave you halal risk when you were growing up, they gave you the education, they did the best that they could for you, and now in all this process they've been aging, they've been growing older, they've been growing weak, now they've retired, now they can't work anymore, now mashallah you've grown up, you've become somebody professional, with their duas and their crying and their hard work, you've become what you are now. So now don't turn you back to your parents. Uh, give them the attention and love they deserve. Uh, this is haqq of your parents upon you. Just as Allah has a haqq over us. وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah has ordained you should worship no one but Allah and show immense kindness to your parents. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله وآله والأحب